Good morning. It's 5.30 a.m. A little bit foggy out here today, as you can see behind me. And I uh, just want to do a very quick video on the fact that it is easier to die for Jesus Christ than it is to live for Him. Um, <clears throat> and this is going to have a very important meaning for the future. Uh, what am I talking about? You see, how could that be possible? It's easier to, to die for Jesus than to live for Jesus. Well, um, living for Jesus, uh, a long life, you're going to have a lot of things that will happen to you that most people just don't want to happen. Um, you're going to have family and friends turn against you. You're going to have your parents oftentimes reject you, um, say that you're crazy and you're part of a cult and whatever else. And um, <clears throat> you're going to lose jobs, you're going to have other things and whatever else. And there's the constant daily struggle with the flesh, the, the sin and everything else that you struggle with as a Christian. Um, the Apostle Paul writes about that in Romans chapter 7 and talks about the good thing that he knows that he should do. He doesn't do that, he struggles with that. Um, so living for Jesus is oftentimes very difficult. A lot of people, you know, modern Christianity comes along and they say, oh, it's not difficult. It's a wonderful life. It's, it's great fun and everything else. Everybody loves you and things. Uh, that's not true. That is not true. You read the New Testament and you see how many problems Paul had. And uh, <clears throat> when Paul went to prison, a lot of his Christian friends actually forsook him. And uh, they weren't there for Paul. So... Uh, modern Christianity is a satanic abomination. And I don't say that as some newbie. You know, I get these little, I've been saved for two years and I'm going to rebuke you or something. Um, <clears throat> I've been in ministry a long time. Full time since 2007. Get around this tree here. Uh, and I've learned a lot of things. And in Christianity, New Testament Christianity, um, there is no hierarchical structure where the, the clergy or something, I'm an official member of the clergy and you have to submit to me or something, bow down and kiss my foot or something. No, but there's some respect there for an elder that labors in the word and doctrine. And you listen to the voice of experience, you say, hey, this guy was raised in church buildings. I was. Um, he's preached in pulpits. He's preached on the streets. He's gone out and done... Uh, ministry type work going door to door the whole thing passing out gospel tracts i've done all the different things that qualify you i've had hands laid on me by older men of a baptist church i used to attend you know so i've had i've gone through all of it okay i was being considered for a senior pastor position i was i served basically as a assistant pastor Filling in for a uh, pastor was when he was away with his wife, doing all the pastoral duties and everything else. So, you know, uh, if you're newly saved, don't be a punk. Don't think to yourself that uh, you can just speak down to a man that's been around for a while. All right, you need to learn some things. Okay? So just, I need to say that because I see that in the comments sometimes. Oh, I'm going to rebuke you. You know, I've been saved for a week now and I've watched, you know, 12 of your videos or something. So I'm qualified to rebuke you. Okay, child. Uh, you have to watch out for that stuff. But the fact is, when you're saved for a long time, and I've been around Christianity for my whole life. I was dedicated as a baby up in front of the church building. And I'm 48 years old now. All right, a lot of you, you don't, you might be older than me, but you don't have as much experience as me when it comes to being part of Christian groups. All right, so um, not trying to be proud or anything else. I'm just simply stating some facts here that people need to understand and uh, people need to respect um, the position of an elder a little bit more than they do. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have been saved from this ministry and a lot of people's lives have been changed. So, um, but I'll tell you right now, it is not easy to live for Jesus. 
you know, the old hymn goes, Living for Jesus, a life that is true, striving to please him in all that I do. And it goes on. Um, but striving to please him in all that I do? Uh, that's not easy. Every day you get up and you think, okay, what should I do today, Lord? What do you want for me? And, and, um, and you have to think about that. What do I need to give up? What things should I say? What, you know, oh, there's that secular music going through my head. Stop, stop bring, bringing every thought into captivity, you know, to the obedience of Christ. You're supposed to not let wicked thoughts come into your mind. Every day, every day. I messed up. Lord, I'm so sorry. I, I wasted a whole bunch of time yesterday, Lord, I, watching a bunch of things, trying to research this subject. Turned out the subject wasn't right and whatever else. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. I wasted time. Life of repentance, life of, of sacrifice, daily sacrifice. It's not easy. It isn't. Um, and uh, the reality of it is that uh, in the future, and this is where this video is heading, in the future here, um, in the time of Jacob's trouble, there will be people that are going, not going to have to live for Jesus. Uh, they'll get saved, and it'll be a very quick decision that they make. It's going to be a decision of, um, you're there at the guillotine, and it's uh, take the mark or you lose your head. Take the mark and worship the beast in his image. I'll say it that way. It's more accurate. Um, and if you don't, your head's coming off. What's it going to be? And the people are going to be looking and they're thinking, I really don't want to go to that bloody guillotine over there. Um, but yet I'm not taking the mark. I have decided to follow Jesus. Get the man. Put him over there. Put him down in there. And they're saying, well, Lord, um, I guess I can call you Lord. I, I uh, never was a Christian in the past, but I, I know that I'm not going to be part of that. And, and uh, Lord, I... I pray I go to heaven when I die. About that time, whew, goes the lever and... And that's it. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Souls under the altar, Revelation chapter 6. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood upon them that are on the earth and everything, you know? I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Uh won't be much of a life of sanctification it's just going to be people and i i can see people right now and you probably can as well that they're just not not ready to get saved there's just some things there it's not lining up but they're so fervent for the truth and they would die for the truth and i'm thinking yeah i think you will in the future the body christ leaves and these people are going to realize that the resurrection happened and they're going to say oh boy you know um i'm not following that antichrist guy that that guy over there he's not jesus that guy's the antichrist and the people around them will say what what did you just say we have to call the number now the hotline or whatever else or or whatever the case is well i don't care i'm not going to to worship that guy he's the antichrist i'm not worshiping him don't you speak that way about christ he's returned don't you realize how much peace he's brought and prosperity and and things and they're going to say no I, I it's all false that peace and prosperity stuff that's false and um and then it's going to be off with your head uh make the profession of faith there and boom you die and you go home to be with the lord very quick um and i believe that there's probably been christians in the church age that have gone through a similar thing. It's a, they might live in a Muslim country or something like that. And um, it's a very short amount of time that between their salvation when God saves them and then they get killed and go home. So that's uh, pretty much what I wanted to say. Um, and I think going forward, we're going to see a lot of people that, uh, although they're looking like they're coming to the truth uh, in actuality, they're just, uh, they're not quite getting it, and they're going to be a saint in the time of Jacob's trouble. There's just not enough time for them to make it in. So, um, 
guess that will be it for this video. I'll tell you a real quick story here. I'm in this little area here. We call it the uh, Hidden Meadow. And um, this little plot of land on our property here, surrounded by trees. And um, we were actually back in the woods over that way, uh, over this way here. Let me turn around like that, back in there. And uh, we were doing some work back in the woods. And um, Oliver, so when we first bought the property in 2017, he was three years old. And um, he started walking back into the woods. And normally he wouldn't go very far, but for some reason he just felt like he was going to do some exploring. So he walked back into here and we didn't even know that this existed back in here. We just thought it was all woods going back through. And, and um, so he disappears and we're back in there working and things. And, and all of a sudden we're looking around, where's Oliver at? Where did he go? And, and I knew he'd headed from the woods over this way. And so I started to hike through the woods came into this, you know, the hidden meadow here, and wow, I didn't even know this existed back here. And uh, it turned out that while I was coming in, he had come back in here, hiked around, went out and to the field area out that way, and then turned and came up around and found us again. So uh, he's got a real good sense of direction. Um, a lot of the old time hunting and fishing guides in Northern Maine, I've read about that that they didn't even use compasses when they were hiking around in the woods. They had just a natural ability to kind of orient where they're at and whatever, and oh, let's go this way. And I see it with my son. And even, you know, when, we, when he was really little and, and things, you know, maybe a year or two after that incident that happened, um, we'd say, which way are we headed? And he'd look and he'd say, north, <laughs> you know, and we'd be heading north or you know we're going east now or something and he knew no compass so just thought i'd share that little story with that now that i'm back here in the uh, hidden meadow so here we have i'll show you one other thing here before i sign out on this video i'll turn the camera around you can see in a wild apple tree you can see the little apples in the tree they don't get very big. A lot of the wild apples, some of them get bigger. We have some that are regular size apple trees, but these little apples, they're still pretty good. You can use them for recipes and things. They're not anywhere near ready yet. They're, you know, usually October. At the end of October or so is when we usually harvest these. So, but that will be it. Thank you very much for watching.